Okay, so you've got your boat and you're happily cruising around. How about keeping in touch with the outside world? You don't need to escape the World Wide Web uh, with the sophisticated communication systems that can be used on a boat these days. But what are the best methods? Let's look at the bits of technology that are best suited to boat use. Now, the towpath telegraph was always reckoned to be faster than light, with news of boaters, triumphs and tragedies spreading from one end of the canal system to another so quickly that most people couldn't work out how it happened. These days there's no secret about it, and the modern occupants of the cut are not afraid to use the most modern methods to keep in touch. We talk to other boat people using Twitter, Facebook, various blogs, uh, specialist internet communities, a virtual boat club, and of course the usual email. With others it's the mobile phone call or text. Old fashioned snail mail is only used for sending parcels, communicating with authority or birthday cards. In fact, a life afloat in the linear village we call Britain's waterways almost demands the latest in electronic communications if you want to keep track of the many friends you'll make as you and they move around the system. We once uh, followed a workings boat um, electronically as it travelled from Ellesmere Port to Little Venice in the heart of London in just six days with great fascination. The short, honest bursts of communication on Facebook and Twitter gave glimpses of their struggles with low pounds, sticky locks and difficult boaters as they dashed southwards. We have some friends who are always posting on Facebook to tell us uh, and the rest of the world how, how they're doing and how they're getting on. Others are still relatively in the dark age of texts and phone calls. Twitter seems to be the favourite of younger canal people um, and using such social networks is also a way of getting messages through to organisations like Canal and River Trust and the Inland Waterways Association. Both have a presence on Facebook and Twitter and like to befriend or follow those with an active view about the system. Or perhaps I should say those with a big mouth. Um, these days it's relatively simple and cheap to equip yourself with what you need and it's going to get even easier with 5G. A few years ago I would have said a laptop was essential but these days a smartphone of some description, uh, many love the iPhone but I use Android, is all you need. Much of my communications are carried out with the aid of the phone and the appropriate applications and a generous data allowance of course from my phone provider not as cheap as land, really. Uh, using the phone, I can monitor my emails, check Facebook and Twitter, instantly announce my opinions to the world or my Facebook friends and Twitter followers, at least. Most of those are waterways-related people, people we know, or the friends of people we know, with an interest in boats, canals and all the rest. The advantages are that this is instant. You can use it on the stern of the boat and even share the pictures and items of interest as you move along. It doesn't use much power, although the phone does seem to spend a lot of time being recharged. Um, the disadvantages are that it's small for large fingers like mine. Um, I always fear dropping it in the cut and the picture quality isn't that good. Despite that, if you're not a great writer, only want to see pictures on a small screen and love being in constant contact, the smartphone could be all you need on a boat. Mine certainly reduces the amount of time the laptop is draining juice from my battery bank, although uh, I couldn't write longer articles or process high-quality pictures, the pictures without the laptop. That laptop, along with uh, the home MiFi I now use to ensure I can get a signal almost anywhere, uh, keeps me in touch with the working world. Uh, and it's sometimes a relief to get back to a proper keyboard and screen more suited to my aged eyesight. Sometimes only paper will do, of course, and post is often the, uh, the bane of a liverboard's life. Many marinas won't accept post for liverboards, presumably so that they don't fall foul of 
the planning conditions on their uh, development. And boaters have to use all sorts of methods from expensive post handling services to post office boxes at the local post office. Those like us who are usually on the move will tend to um, dragoon a member of the family to collect the post and then post it out to a nominated post office on the route. The post restaurant system is free to use and just means getting posts sent to you by name followed by the, uh, the words post restaurant and the address of the post office you want to collect from. You can get the address of all post offices on the web and uh, then simply use it. You should be then able to turn up with some form of picture ID uh, and collect your post. I have to say sometimes I'll ring ahead and check with them. Um, we've used it to buy stuff on the internet and uh, for official them like uh, GPs and such like. Um, I've begun to believe that a new community of boaters, especially liverboards and those with an interest in uh, the culture and history of the waterways, is developing in place of the old camaraderie of working boat families. You're seeing it in London, uh, where the liverboard boaters have come together to fight CRT's plans to drive them off some of the region's uh, waterway mooring sites. And elsewhere, many of the historic boat fans are regular electronic, in a regular ele electronic con contact. And I, I reckon about half our friends who live on board use Facebook as a mean of, means of keeping in touch. Unlike most such electronic communities, um, the boat aversion reinforced their connection with proper get-togethers. We also belong to Cutweb, which is a, an internet boat club, um, and the message boards are in constant use, uh, as are many of the um, forums. Cutweb holds regular gigs for members, often in a pub, uh, so people can put faces to the electronic counterparts on their computer. Historic boat fans meet up for festivals like Braunston and Ellesmere Port, and ordinary liverboards tend to gather at such festivals. Those meetings in beer tents and on the towpath cement electronic friendships and introduce new people to the community. If you live afloat and cruise the system, even for part of the year, you're also going to come across friends and acquaintances uh, on your travels. You moor up, spot a boat you know, and end up having a long chat, a cup of tea, and perhaps a meal and a drink. Friendship is reinforced by the meeting and maintained by the subsequent contacts by email, social networking, uh, or just phone and text. It's a curious world, and it often means you your contact with friends is intense and short-lived and great fun as a result. All this electronic communication also means boaters across the system are now in contact as never before. A problem on the Leeds and Liverpool would be known about in London well before it's gone through the Canal and, Canal and River Trust procedures and announced as a stoppage. It means that those living and working on the waterways are an immensely valuable resource for other boaters. Most of us will tweet or send a Facebook, a Facebook message highlighting a problem, and the more boating friends or followers we have, the quicker the message will be passed on. These days, the towpath telegraph really does operate at the speed of light, or at least the fastest uh, connection we can get for a smartphone. And I would hope that uh, Canal and River Trust and uh, Anybody who comes after it will tap into that network and start spreading such messages to a wider boating audience. Just keep in touch with us.